We are staying on the island of Morea for the next four days and we're taking you along with us as we experience the incredible beauty and magic that this island has to offer. How is it 5 a.m. and they're singing? We just got here to Morea. First thing, rental car. They are pretty difficult to get on the island unless you rent them multiple months in advance. Everything was sold out on the entire island, but luckily they have these really cool cars. It's called Hello Car. It's a really cool app. We saw it in the airport and just downloaded it. Highly would recommend checking it out because you get stranded like us. Immediately we could find a rental car who was just in the airport. So really nice, it's an easy app. Kind of reminds us of a mix between like the bird app where you just pull up, see if there's any cars or scooters in the area and kind of something like Turo. Anyway, we're gonna head over to the Sofitel, start the vacation. We just arrived here at the Sofitel Hotel. We're one very thing, excited. One thing to note about the rental car, it was super convenient that we could get the Hello Car, but it is manual, so. It's a stick shift. <laughs> if you are from America and you're used to automatics, just make sure you practice or book a rental car further in advance. When is the best time to visit Morea? The best time to visit Morea is between April to October. November through March tends to be really, really rainy. So if you do visit this time, it will be cheaper, but it will probably rain a lot more during your trip. If you wanna see the whales, we would highly recommend visiting between August and October. That seems to be when the whales are there the most. That's when they are coming up from Antarctica. And that is when we went and we would highly recommend visiting, especially in October, early October, if you guys are looking for the best temperature, the best prices and the most whale activity. Sofitel Kia Ora property and we just checked in we're staying in overwater bungalow number 115 and let's show you guys inside we literally just checked in and it is one of the most stunning properties we've ever been to so let's go okay first of all this room is massive like this is definitely one of the biggest hotel rooms we've had in a very long time we have nice little lounge little table just you know look down and see, you know, the lagoon. Apparently there's quite a few sharks and stingrays that will swim on by under there. The next up, we have our outdoor area. I mean, look at this view. Are you kidding? Sunrise room right here because the sunrise is right over there. So that's over behind us. So we're gonna hopefully have some amazing sunrise views this visit, but we have a nice little sitting area. We have a lounge table. We have our own private ladder to go down into the pool. So the pool it literally looks like a pool the water i meant we have an extra little bed over here it'll probably just be a little lounging area a massive tv massive bed everything here is just big but it, i love that they put little flowers every to decorate and they gave us like a little welcome champagne bucket and little welcome lays so far such an amazing experience down to the details we have a little storage closet over here and they give us umbrellas they give us dumbbells a little yoga mat if you want to do some yoga out on your balcony like it's the small details. And then they also have a little safe inside mini bar area, which is pretty big, honestly, full like coffee, Nespresso, and then a nice mini bar that they will restock every day. One thing that everyone in the Facebook groups that I'm in <laughs> before uh, we came here mentioned is to, if you want alcohol, because it's very expensive over on the islands of Tahiti, to buy it in advance at duty free, either at LAX or whatever airport you're flying through Seattle, SFO. The allowance is two liters of like hard liquor per person and two bottles of wine or champagne. But that's kind of just what we did. We bought it on arrival at um, Papiete. I think that's how you say it. Papete. And then we just checked it in our bags over here. Next up, we have the bathroom. Automatic brownie points for robes and slippers and his and her sinks and a massive, beautiful shower. The toilet's kind of small, but you know what? We don't need it to be that, that fancy. 
because this is nice. So we're gonna be staying here for the next three nights and four days, and so we'll have a lot of reviews on the property once we actually get to stay here a little longer. We just went to their restaurant, which was actually really good. We got the Poke Bowls. First meal's Poke Bowl. Freshy fresh. How excited are you? I'm very excited. Look at this view. I've heard some mixed reviews about the food here, so we'll keep it real uh, as we eat our way through the islands of Tahiti. But Poke Bowls were pretty good so far. They also have a dive center that we just stopped by. We signed up to go scuba diving tomorrow morning, so we're super excited about that. And then they also have rentals on property for like snorkeling gear, kayaks, paddle boards, you name it, which is at the same area where the scuba dive shop is. So we're gonna try and take advantage of all of that during our stay. We got a lot of exciting stuff coming up on this island. Tomorrow we're going ATVing and we're also doing our scuba dive and we might go out for a sunset sail who knows how ambitious we are feeling so stay tuned for that So there are four things that you have to do when you guys are visiting Morea. Number one, if you guys are here during the right time, is going to be whale watching. We went whale watching with Morea Moana and it was incredible. We did two different tours. We did a private tour and we did a public tour. The private tour went out in the morning. We got there, left at 8 a.m., did four hours in the water and immediately within the first hour we saw a whale. It was the closest encounter, literally five feet from us. It was hands down one of the coolest experiences we've ever had. After that we went and played with the dolphins, having a private experience was really cool because we didn't have to worry about anyone else around us. We really could cater to what we wanted to do and we wanted to see some different type of fish. So we went out into deeper water. The public tour was also really cool though. We met amazing people. Our guide was great. If you guys are looking between doing a morning tour or an afternoon tour, it really depends on what you want. The morning tours, a lot of the times are a little bit easier to get out in the water, not as much wind, a little bit quieter. The sunset ones though, we did get to end in this area where there were rays all over us. There were black tip sharks all around us. It was a really fun way to end the day. So both have their pros and cons. If you guys are here with a group, we would highly recommend doing the private tour so you guys could have it all to yourself. But if you guys were here and you're just by yourself or maybe just a couple, doing the public tour is totally okay if you're doing it for more on a budget. Another pro to doing the private tour is if you guys are doing the photo and video package. Definitely if you guys are doing the public tour, it's a little bit harder to get photos of yourself. You might get a lot of really cool photos and videos of the animals if that's what you're into, but if you want to get yourself experience in it, we would highly recommend doing the private tour and booking the photo package. Since this is our honeymoon, we definitely want to do the private tour and have them take the photos and videos for us so we can just relax, enjoy the moment, and experience the whales. Last thing to note about booking the whale tour is you're going to want to do that in advance. It gets extremely busy here because it's one of the only places in the world where you can actually go and swim with the humpback whales. We had to book this about four months in advance. We knew some people that booked it up to six months in advance. So once you book your trip to Morea, if that's on your bucket list, you definitely wanna try and find a whale watching tour immediately. Now let's get to number two. Another thing that you have to do in Morea is go on an ATV tour. It was such a fun experience. We recommend doing it immediately when you get here because you can get acquainted with the island very quickly. We did the half day tour, which you spend about three and a half hours on the ATVs. The first spot we went to was the most famous spot on Morea for an overlook. It's called Belvedere. It's also one of the trailheads for two of the most famous hikes that you can do on Morea. We also got to go up to Magic Mountain. Magic Mountain, you get to look directly over the two bays in Morea, so it was a Stunning lookout, you can hike up there, but it is very, very steep. Even going up on the ATV was a little unsettling. So really fun opportunity though. We went through the pineapple fields, got to learn a lot about the different fruit and history about Morea. That's definitely one thing we would recommend doing when you come here is booking some type of a activity to learn the culture, whether it's a food tour, which we didn't have the opportunity to do, or an ATV tour, or just getting out on, the, on a boat and getting out on the water. You learn so much about the people, the climate, the animals that live here, and it's such a beautiful, literally feels like we're here in Moana. Let's jump into number three.
Number three is you have to go diving. You can either go diving like snorkeling type or actually go diving. We got to go scuba diving. We did a two tank dive and went directly out of the dive shop here at the Sofitel, which was really convenient. If you guys aren't staying at the Sofitel, there are dive shops all over the island though. And we would highly recommend getting out there. You can see lots of eagle rays. We saw tons of sharks out there, lots and lots of schools of fish. And it's really cool because you can do two types of diving. You can go on the outside of the lagoon where you get to go a little bit deeper see different types of animals or you can stay on the inside of the lagoon and it's much much calmer we did one dive on outside and inside definitely say that if you dive inside the lagoon you do get a lot more variety between the different fish and different animals that you can see if you're not scuba diving or scares the heck out of you you can also go snorkeling if you're picking between which side of the island to go snorkeling between the Hilton side or the Sofitel side we would highly recommend coming over here on the Sofitel side there's tons and tons of wildlife inside the lagoon is very protected so you can go swim anywhere you want and a lot of the places will provide snorkeling gear for you so we definitely recommend getting in the water checking out the wildlife tons of coral everywhere and like I said since more Morea is protected by this reef outside of the lagoon it can get really rough but inside the lagoon is usually very very calm so every day is a great day to go snorkeling the last thing that we recommend doing here in Morea is you have to go hiking we didn't have the opportunity to do too much hiking because it we didn't have a rental car but some of the more popular hikes that we recommend are doing three coconuts or three pines. Both of those leave directly out of the Belvedere lookout that we were talking about earlier. If you don't do those two, another one is the famous waterfall here. I'm not going to say the name of it because we're definitely going to but butcher it, but we'll put it down in the description if you guys want to check that one out. That one is private and you do have to hire a guide in order to do that hike. Make sure you do your research on the hikes. There are a lot of hikes that are public, but there are also a lot of hikes that are private here and make sure you bring good hiking shoes. These hikes are very similar to the ones in Hawaii where you're hiking on needle nose edges, you're going up ropes, there's huge drops on the side. You want to make sure you are very prepared if you go hiking here because some of them can be very, very extreme. But definitely something that we would add to your Morea bucket list. So we're just finishing up our time here at the Sofitel and it has been absolutely amazing. We're kind of sad to leave, but we're heading on to our next island and flying out to Raiatea and Taha'a later today. But we've been absolutely impressed by this property. I would give it like a 4.8 out of 5. Like, it was very, very close to a 5 out of 5 for me. The only thing being the food could have been a little bit better. It was good, but it wasn't like insanely amazing but it, or terrible. It was just like pretty average food. So that was the only ding I would say. And the other thing to consider when you're staying here is that it is a little bit farther away from the rest of the activities on the island and the rest of like the restaurants and downtown area. So you will have to like taxi back and forth, which can get a little expensive. Or if you have a rental car, that might be a little more ideal, but we didn't. So that was a little bit of like the only con for us. But what we absolutely loved about the resort is basically everything. They have so many amenities here. They really care down to like the little tiny nitty gritty details from like coming in, turning down your bed for the night, giving you like earplugs and an eye mask and refilling your mini bar every day. And they have a dive shop over there. They have free rentals for kayaks and paddle boards and like paddle boats. So like literally there's so much to do just on the resort and you're right next to Tamay Beach, which is like the most beautiful beach on the island. So you really could just stay at the resort for a few days and like not even leave while still doing all these amazing activities on the island. Yeah, so we would highly, highly recommend staying here if you guys are coming to Morea for your honeymoon or any special occasion because it is a pricier resort. It is a five-star resort. So keep that in mind. There are other ways to make this trip a lot more affordable and that's by not staying in overwater bungalows and maybe doing like an Airbnb or a Verbo. But if you guys are celebrating something fun or want a little more luxury vacation, this is an absolutely incredible property that we would 10 out of 10 come back and stay at again. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching our Morea guide. If you guys are looking for more guides to Bora Bora, Rangaroa, Taaha, and we're going to spend one night in Tahiti, make sure you guys subscribe and give us a like. We are going to be sharing all of our tips for the next few days as we explore the islands on our honeymoon. And we'll see you guys out there on the next adventure.